remind yourself why in the world you were putting yourself through the hell that is publishing or writing. Hi, I'm Jenna. I write science fiction and fantasy novels and they will most likely ruin your life. I also make other two videos all about writing here on this channel. And these are my tips on how to actually keep your writing resolutions. I have videos all linked up there and in the description down below all about 2022 writing goals, writing journal, everything else like that. But this is how to actually stick to the goals that you wrote down for the year. Your writing resolutions, if you will. But my main tip is make your writing dreams versus your writing goals. I mentioned it as well in that video that I'm linking up above and down below for you guys, is that your dreams and your goals are not the same thing. Your goals are things you can actively work towards. Your dreams are things that would be nice to accomplish. Dream would be get an agent. A goal would be query, for an example. Number one tip I can give anyone in this world. That way you're not disappointed when you don't reach your dreams because you have no control over them. You can only work as hard as you can to get to doing or interacting with the dream and you might not achieve it because it's not entirely in your control. And your goals shouldn't have you work towards your dreams. They should be connected, not completely separately. So if you're like, my dream is to be traditionally published but then your goals for the year are all self-publishing dreams or vice versa, you're not working towards your dream. Something is not connecting, it's my number tip. Next tip is check in as often as you need to. If it is literally hourly, do so. If it is daily, like how I do, do it. If it's the start and the end of the day, like I sometimes do, do it. And check in is basically looking at your dreams, your goals, your monthly to do, your weekly to do, your daily to do, checking in with them as regularly as you need to to remind yourself why in the world you were putting yourself through the hell that is publishing or writing. Remind yourself why. <laughs> <laughs> check back in see how far you have come to motivate you to keep going on check in as often as you need to don't feel like oh I just did it if you feel like you need to do it again do it the more check-ins the better next tip really should have been my first tip which is don't compare yourself to others <laughs> okay like there is no situation on earth where someone's living and writing situation is the same as yours so if you are basically basing your success off of someone else's metrics you're gonna be all off <laughs> You're like, dang, why can't I do all this stuff that XYZ person does? Well, maybe it's because they work from home and have a supportive spouse who pays for everything and you work 40 hours a week and you drive an hour back and forth from your job every day and you have three kids and they're like, don't have children. <laughs> and no one's situation is going to be the same. The easiest thing you can do is not you compare yourself to anybody, but if you know, that's obviously hard. You could find someone with a really similar situation to yours and sort of base it off of that. But you have to remember too, they're a completely different person with completely different abilities than you. And it doesn't mean they have more abilities than you. It just means your situation is different. So don't compare yourself to others. But if you have to, base yourself off of where really similar people are to you. So if you work 40 hours a week, compare yourself to someone else who works 40 hours a week. If you have kids, compare yourself to someone else who has kids. Don't go and compare yourself if you work 40 hours a week, you have three kids, an animal, you also volunteer to somebody who his entire life is revolved around writing and they live at home with their parents. You're not gonna do the same amount of stuff. <laughs> you're not going to be able to. And you'll eventually work up your stamina too. So you're going to be able to do more things the more stuff you've already done. So if you're barely starting out on your journey, don't compare yourself to someone who's been in the game for 20 years just try not to compare it in general but if you have to try to find someone as close to you and you might realize you're actually doing pretty good because you look up to this person who you know who has a similar situation to you and they're in the same place as you or they're in a similar situation that's like if you really have to that's what you should do but i recommend just not doing it at all because even if you find someone with a really similar situation to you it's not 100 percent your situation mistakes are lessons not failures <laughs> I know it might feel like when you fuck up, like it's the end of the world, but I promise you there are more stories, there are more agents, there are no more books, there are more readers, there are more opportunities to do what you are dreaming of doing, and the only actual failure is when you give up. So don't give up. <laughs> And it, that's different than like, oh, I'm giving up on this specific book, I'm putting it on the shelf. You know, like, to me that's not even giving up, it's you making an active choice 
to decide that you're moving on from a project and to focus on something else. Giving up is when you decide you're no longer writing in general and you don't want to do this anymore. And that might be something you realize, hey, I'm not actually that into writing. I would more have liked the aesthetic of writing, but I don't actually enjoy writing or editing or crafting stories. I, it's it's not for me anymore. I, my love for it kind of fell off. But guess what? That's an active decision to pursue other things in life. So you're not giving up. It's when you still love writing, still love your project, and then you don't want to do it anymore because it's too hard. That is giving up. Next is determine your why. Why the fuck are you doing this to yourself? Spending hours working on a story, editing it, coming up with it, having people reject it. Why in the world are you putting up with it? Figure out your why. Is it because you love your story so much? Is it because it, it, it's something you've always wanted to do? What is it and why? what is your why? And go back to it and check in with it as much as you need to. Because there are a reason, <laughs> there is a reason and it should be a good reason why you're putting yourself through this shit. <laughs> and if there isn't, figure it out. Because I guarantee you there's probably a really deep reason seated in your heart as to why you are torturing yourself with words. <laughs> Next is accountability. I talked about it all in that video up there, but being able to hold yourself accountable or have someone else hold you accountable for your dreams and your goals is one of the best things you can do for yourself. Because if you keep your goals all tucked in right here and you never tell anyone about them, then yeah, it feels safer because no one can hold you accountable because you don't feel like you failed because you didn't tell anybody. But then guess what? You're never going to do what you set out to do and the thing that your heart is calling you to do, you'll never do it. So share it with people. Because one, you'll find people who also want to do similar things to you and they can hype you up and you can hype them up and you will get farther together than you will get on your own. So that would be my last tip is accountability. But that's it for me today. So give this video a big old thumbs up if you did like it and comment down below what are your writing resolutions and how are you going to keep them. I'll hold you accountable, don't worry. And remember to subscribe because I make writing calm related videos every Friday. Catch you guys next time, so bye!